Excuse me as I kiss the sky. getting ready to shoot I wanted to show you guys what I usually take on a photo shoot with me so I have my bag full of stuff like personal items and this is my computer bag I usually have two laptops in here I've had this book bag since I first got my first tech job it says tech systems on the front so I've had this bag for such a long time it's so old but I hold my HP in here I also have a Dell I used the shell of a Dell and then bought the pieces I'm like uh, quirky like that so here are some lingerie pieces that I got off of um, Amazon I didn't buy them the guys that are subscribed to my OnlyFans bought them for me. Every lingerie piece that you see me post is usually a piece that a guy subscribed to my OnlyFans wants me to wear. So today it'll be these three pieces. And interestingly enough, they're all black. I get all types of colors. This is like, what, 14, 15, 16th? pair I've done within the past month. A subscriber of mine on OnlyFans has bought me to shoot in. So you know I'm like a frugal girl so I don't really like to spend a lot of money on a lot of bullshit. I like to save my money. That's how you end up making six figures. You have multiple sources of income and you live well below your means. So, I have my go-to bee glue. Of course, my oil, I don't wanna be out here dry up in these streets. I have my Vino for my beautiful skin. My wig and my jewelry in one thing. <laughs> I put it in one thing. These are all my makeup sponges. I need new ones, cause these are dirty. These are filled all with makeups. <laughs> Here's another makeup. Bag. This is my head scarf that I put on once I put my wig on. This is my brush. This is my favorite brush. I use this um, to put on my finishing powder. Got my Juvia's Place. I have my other Juvia's Place, like makeup on everything. Got my pink chiffon. Got my Dove deodorant. More pink chiffon body cream. And this is my favorite soap. Okay, I love this soap. It's coconut milk. When I'm using body wash, of course, I use Bath and Body Works, but when I'm using soap, I use this. Pad, just in case. Tampon, just in case. Now I keep it frugal. I don't play around with the money. So since I don't wear makeup often and I only wear it for photo shoots and stuff, I go ahead and buy the affordable stuff. I don't spend a lot of money on makeup because I don't really wear a lot of makeup all the time. So that's what's in my personal belongings bag. Also to eat, I have me a Chick-fil-A salad. I don't eat salad dressing, but my daughter got this for me. I don't do salad dressing. I just eat it bold. <laughs> well, I don't like salad dressing like that. And it kind of defeats the purpose of eating a salad if you're going to put a salad dressing on it. You feel me? This is my teeny blend tumbler. Um, if you've been watching me for a while, you've seen me when I first started promoting teeny blend. They're helping me with my weight loss. This morning I had a smoothie and I put their green blend into my smoothie. So now I'm just having water and a salad. Well, this is the bag that I keep my lighting in. If I'm shooting with a photographer, he usually brings his own lighting, but I have a big ring light that I use, that I bought to do videos in. This is my camera stand. But inside of this is, I, is my ring light holder. So yeah, this is my ring light. I have two colors. I have the white, shade in the orange shade i probably need to get a new ring light i've had this ring light for like i don't know i've had it for a while 
I can change the colors on it. It's really big. It makes a lot of noise. It's like, anyway, it fits on a stand, just like my camera stand. So I set the temperature in the room as cold as I can bear it because when I turn on the lights, it gets really hot. So if it's me and a photographer, the photographer has body heat, I have body heat, then the lights have body heat as well, I'll be hot. And then my face starts to look a little oily and sweaty. So I want my face to stay dry. <laughs> so I make sure it's like kind of cold in here. So, so 65 is it. Making money on OnlyFans is not hard. It's just about you being extremely comfortable. You would be surprised how many women actually want to do OnlyFans, but they just don't want to be judged for it. And I say it all of the time. Women are like ostracized about our sexuality all of the time. So a lot of women hide how comfortable that they feel about their sexuality. Now, OnlyFans is still a business. And that's the one thing that I need for anybody who's asking me questions about OnlyFans to understand. That's the first thing that I usually tell them. Like, it's a business number one. It's something that you need to look at separate from your personal life. You can't mesh the two. And a lot of times you're going to meet a lot of guys who want to mesh the two. And just like any other business venture you do, it can get complicated when you start mixing that crap with your money. Now, first things foremost, what I do is schedule posts. I make sure that I post something every day. And OnlyFans is set up in a manner to where you can schedule your posts. Also, I only do photo shoots twice a month. And with each photo shoot, I make sure I take enough photos for me to be able to post at least every three days. Now, I don't post photo shoot photos every three days. What I do is post my selfies in between time. I try to post weekly. Now, a lot of people ask me, do I do pornography? <laughs> No, I don't do pornography, but what I do is very provocative. It's very sexy. And yes, men pay for it. And really, it's just about who I am. The kind of quality material that I put out. I put out 10 second clips. I put out three minute videos and I put out five minute videos. I do shout outs. I'm selling fetishes. A lot of times men like fetishes. They like stuff like my feet. They want to see me dressed a certain way so they buy me lingerie or they buy me outfits. A lot of fellas purchase things off of my Amazon wish list. Like if you don't want to tip, you don't want to give cash because some people feel uncomfortable with that. You know, I'm like, okay, well then buy a gift off of my Amazon wish list. Buy something you want to see me in or buy me a sex toy. A lot of times men will buy me sex toys, you know? Right now I'm in the top 10 on OnlyFans and sometimes it could get hard. Like I went down to top five and then turn around and now I'm at like 7.8 because it fluctuates. You never keep the same people. Like people have to have a recurring subscription and keep coming back over and over again. And then I do like promotional campaigns where I let people do trial periods for three days or one day or seven days. I make sure that I keep the same number of people a month. Now that could be difficult. Now I think the biggest problem that I'm having with OnlyFans is that a lot of men have a lot of respect for me. And honestly, I didn't even realize that so many men has so much respect for me where they like I love you so much you know you talk so much about spirituality and God and you're so positive and you're so kind I just feel like I would disrespect you to be on your OnlyFans and I'm like no <laughs> me being sexy is a part of me my sexuality is also a part of me I may not be having sex right now there's times I've been celibate and there's times I've been having sex with one partner there was a time where I was bisexual and there was a time where I was in the swingers lifestyle. There are different sections of my life and not everybody is involved in those specific sections of my life. I share a little bit of my life and I keep a lot of my life to myself. Like who I'm sleeping with right now, if I'm sleeping with anybody at all. My private business is my private business. Now, during OnlyFans, I did have to get like comfortable with the idea of somebody else seeing me do something sexy that I would actually do for somebody that I'm in a relationship with. I really had to get over that. Like that was like hard my first month. Right now, I think I'm on my third month. My first month, it was like very difficult for me to get out of my shell because I really just didn't feel comfortable showing men you know how like sexy I get with a guy that I'm dating. I had to designate things for 
OnlyFans versus things that I would do inside of a relationship. And I keep it very separate. I keep it sacred. You know what I mean? Like, it's just certain things I'm just not going to do on OnlyFans. Right when people first log into my OnlyFans, there's a menu up there. It shows people what I'm actually selling on there. Because you can't just sell the membership. You have to actually sell things as well. So I have products that I'm also selling on my OnlyFans. This is so I can make additional income on top of the subscription fee. Now what I notice with a lot of guys, a lot of guys just want to talk. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know it's some girls that's on OnlyFans and they men don't want to talk to them. You know, men don't want to have nothing to say. Men ain't even trying to hear that. Men just want them to bust it wide open. I put a poll on my OnlyFans. It was like, yo, you want me to bust it wide open? Or you want me to keep it, keep something to the imagination? It was like, bust it wide open. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but there's some women out there that bust a wide open and there's some women out there that don't do all that you know what i'm saying another thing that comes with only fans is sugar daddies a lot of sugar daddies contact me some of them contact me and are willing to pay me to get off only fans altogether but me it's like i gotta get to know a guy first before i start like making all of these different life choices you know what i mean like there's guys out there offering me five thousand dollar weekly allowances just to be their sugar baby however my biggest issue with all of the sugar daddies that keep hitting me up i want to know how consistent they're going to keep doing this and how long they're going to keep doing this before i just decide to just like quit what i'm doing you know but for the most part, a lot of sugar daddies don't want me doing OnlyFans anymore after that's where they met me at. You know what I'm saying? It's like you you can't just tell me to stop doing it, you know? But it's, it's weird that they meet me on there and then they say, hey, you know, I don't want you to do this anymore. I respect it though, especially when they're looking for someone to actually invest their money and their time into because most times sugar daddies want to invest their time, their money, you know, into me and stuff like that. A lot of them are like older and widowed. What I've noticed a lot of sugar daddies are uh, widowed and they're having a difficult time finding a sugar baby, you know what I mean? Finding a sugar baby is like difficult because a lot of them are weird. You know, a lot of them will take their money and never talk to them again. That's one of the biggest complaints I hear from sugar daddies. I have not picked a specific sugar daddy for myself. I haven't even decided the whether I wanted to be a sugar baby or not. I always tell them when they reach out to me, when they say to me, you want to be my sugar baby? I like, I'm like, listen, I could be a beautiful woman that you talk to and you can toss me some bread sometimes, but please do not call me a sugar baby you know what I mean <laughs> but to me OnlyFans is a business it will always be a business model I have different business models so I'm an entrepreneur I'm a beautiful woman so I sell my beauty I have high sex appeal so I sell my sex appeal all of the things that were given to me by God I use them to sell so I can survive I don't look at it how other people look at it you know I don't I just don't, you know. I try not to be judgmental of other people, so that's what makes it kind of easy for more men to come flocking to me because they can tell me stories and I won't judge them, you know. I'm not in a judgmental mode. I don't judge anybody. I try to look at people in a more positive light and I look so, you know, and I look at them and be like, eh, I don't get it twisted. If I feel a negative vibe, I'm bouncing. <laughs> but for the most part, I'm not about to sit up here and be judging people, you feel me? I ain't in no position to judge nobody. It, when you get to my level of spirituality and you get to my level of respect for God, when you look at other people and what other people are doing, you factor in what their life is like and what could possibly be going on in their life for them to behave the way that they behave. Damn, for the air conditioner cut off, it got real quiet. <laughs> Yeah, so some people might look at what I do and be like, well, how could you believe in God and also, you know, do something like OnlyFans? And it's just like, I don't see how I'm supposed to separate the two. Like, I love God. I love sex. Everybody has sex. God created sex. Then other people be like, that's your temple. How could you show it to everybody? Well, that's like church or a temple for real. People come to the temple. They don't just look at the temple from the outside and wave. <laughs> People go into the temple and worship. <laughs> like, I just, I don't know. I just, I just have a different mindset. I think differently than a lot of other people. So for me, it's like my temple. There are certain things that I can share with people and there's certain things that I'm not going to share with people. Honestly, I block out anybody that has anything negative to say. I'm not worried about people calling me names. Like people ask me, are you worried about people calling you names? People calling you a hoe? People calling you a bitch? I don't care about none of that. <laughs> 
<laughs> people call you certain things because they frustrated with themselves. They look at you and judge you because they being so hard on themselves. You understand? Like I'm not hard on myself. I'm not my worst critic. You know, I used to be like real critical of myself so it could possibly hurt my feelings when someone was saying something about me that wasn't necessarily true. And sometimes I would reflect back to them their behavior because, you know, you want to give people a taste of their own medicine and give them some type of revenge. But at the end of the day, I realized, like, how is that benefiting me? You know what I mean? Like, that wasn't making me any more money. It wasn't making me a better person. It wasn't repairing my relationship with me. You understand? Like, your relationship with you and your mental health and how you talk to yourself is more important than what everybody else is saying about you because you got to live with you every day. You got to look in the mirror every day. You the one that got to, you know, sleep with yourself at night. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, listen, you know, as long as you good with you, with what you doing, if you can look yourself in the mirror every day and be okay, then do, do what you do, you know what I mean? I don't condone a lot of things. There's a there's a limit to everything and everybody's limit is different. Everybody has their own little boundaries or whatever. I just keep my thoughts to myself. Anyway, that's all I had to say about OnlyFans. I didn't mean to get too deep. <laughs> but I just wanted to talk about OnlyFans a little bit more. And if you're interested in OnlyFans, because there's a lot of girls out there that just be like, how am I getting to OnlyFans? How do I do this? How do I do that? And my biggest thing is, Honestly, ladies, be honest with yourself. All of us got pictures of ourselves in our phone that's extremely sexy, right? We all got it. And there's a lot of girls out there that got boyfriends and husbands. If you got a boyfriend and your husband, you need to talk to your husband or your boyfriend before you decide to do OnlyFans. Do not do OnlyFans behind their back. That's number one. Number two, if you single, just realize that you can take those sexy pictures that you post all of the time and put them on OnlyFans. And then promote your OnlyFans in a place where they allow it. Like I used to promote my OnlyFans on Facebook and Instagram. And then after the first couple of weeks of me doing it, they shut it off for everybody. So now I can't post it anymore. And plus people were like flagging me. You know, everybody be like slick hating. And so anyway, people was like reporting my OnlyFans like promos and it had a lot to do with people thinking that I passed away and that somebody else was like selling my pictures on OnlyFans when that was just me, you know, coming back on the internet after I had been gone for five months. So a lot of people were flagging it. So anyway, I found another way to promote my OnlyFans in a more classy, more like low key kind of way and it, it brings a lot of traffic to my OnlyFans. But you can go onto other social media platforms and promote your OnlyFans and that'll bring more people, more traffic. I currently make $5,000 a month off OnlyFans. It gets more with time, but I only been on there for like three months. So if you give it like another year, like ask me where I stand with it, you feel me? I gotta go y'all, have vision and stay focused. Namaste.